In the real world, there are lots of relationships which can be modeled as trees. And sometimes that hierarchy is something that we'd like to reflect in our code. How can we do that using a database? Let's mash on that. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. I'm Dave Paquette and Simon Timms today will be talking to us about some new features in Entity Framework Core 8. I'm just here to remind Simon to zoom in a little more. Yeah, that's always good advice. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so I've been going through the last couple of episodes here, taking a look at some of the stuff that I have missed while I have been away from .NET for a while and focusing so far on Entity Framework. Uh, and one of the things that I was pretty interested in is some of these changes in Entity Framework 8 to support hierarchical IDs. Uh, so this functionality has existed for a long time in Entity Framework space, uh, but it has been a community supported package, a community supported effort. And now it is officially supported by the Entity Framework team. Uh, so the data structures that we would want to use to build these things out um, are things that we have like a hierarchy on. So things that you can think of as this is uh, a family tree is a good hierarchy. A file system is a really good hierarchy example. Um, maybe a, an organizational chart at a company could be a good example of that. That's what we're gonna use as our example today. Um, but basically this is just a way of representing a tree data structure inside of a database and you need to query it easily. So technically a tree is a uh, subset of graph uh, and in particular it's an undirected connected and acyclic graph. Uh, and in particular here, we're using a rooted version of this graph. So we have like a single root node and from that a bunch of stuff descends. So if you remember your computing science classes, if you were unfortunate enough to take them, you'll remember things like depth first search and breadth first search and those things are all designed to traverse tree data structures. Um, so inside of SQL Server, uh, we're going to take advantage of this thing called the hierarchy ID. So this is a, a special type that we're going to add to our entity here. Uh, and this is going to allow us to navigate intelligently around the tree. Uh, so I've added this into an employee class. I already have like a regular ID on this uh, object, but I also have a hierarchy ID, which is gonna be called path from CEO. So CEO is the root element of my collection. And from that, a bunch of stuff is going to descend. Um, so I can have multiple representations, like multiple trees within my database table, um, which is no problem, uh, but they need to be disconnected. So in graph theory, that would be called a forest of trees because graph theory people are not very creative. Uh, so the, the tricks to getting this to work is that we need to install a couple of extra packages. So uh, it's a little bit difficult to see and we would just be moaning the fact that zooming in Visual Studio kind of sucks. Um, but basically the things that we need to have are the standard entity framework packages, but also entity framework core.sqlserver.hierarchy ID. Uh, so that is going to mm -hmm. add some abstractions in here. So that is going to add our hierarchy ID type. Uh, and it's also going to allow us to add this additional option in here uh, when we're building our database connection. So we need to pass in a SQL Server Options Builder and tell it to use hierarchy ID. Uh, otherwise, when you go and try and build the database migrations, it'll croak. Uh, ask me how I know that. It's because I did it. Uh, so what we're going to do now is go and build our database. Uh, this is very simple. We're just using the, the mod builder. I gave it has key because I was running into some problems earlier, but I don't think I actually need to give it has key on here. Uh, we can just give it a, a standard DB set without overriding anything. So in our program, we're going to start by just inserting a bunch of employees into the system here. So I've started with this CEO here, who is Bill McIntosh. 
uh, and I just given them a name, a number of years of service, and then that path from CEO is set up as hierarchy.id.get root. In this case, I could also use pause um, to give it like the root element. Uh, and mm -hmm. this is what our IDs look like here. So they end up being just a representation of kind of the different levels that something is at. So everybody who is a descendant who works directly with the CEO, we're calling them VPs in this case, uh, is just like a one digit uh, ID that descends from the CEO. Once you move another level away here, uh, then you're gonna add kind of another slash and another digit after this. So if we want to add another level of somebody who works for, for Jane Jackson here, great, having trouble coming up with creative names today, then we can add another level like this. So they'll be the first person that works for Jane Jackson, um, just like this. And the, so it is important. Those IDs, do they have any relation to the ID ID then? Like the no, primary no. Key? so the ID ID is completely separate. So you can still query this table by just pulling any old ID from it, uh, but you can also query it by using uh, some functions based on this hierarchy ID here. Cool. Um, so let me give you an example of what that might look like here. So we have Marcus right here, uh, and there's a bunch of people who work for Marcus and who work underneath Marcus. So that's basically what we're doing here is we're looking for all the employees that um, descend from this Marcus character here. Uh, so we're basically just saying like, give me everybody who works at that level. So if we go and run this now, we should get uh, everybody basically whose ID starts with slash four. Uh, so we've got uh, Jane Jones, Jane Jackson. I tell you, these names are terrible. I, this, this is where I should be using uh, generative AIs. Uh, and then John Jackson underneath that too. So even though John is like two levels underneath Marcus, uh, he still works for Marcus. So we still see him in the descendants here. Um, so that I lets take us it did that as a single query then? Uh, yeah, so I don't know if we can get this thing to zoom in here. We, we were also discussing this, so let's see if I can zoom in a little bit on the output here. Um, so in the output here, uh, it, did, what did it do for our execution here? Not too far down here. Yeah, so here we go where it's running this query here. Uh, so okay. it is using some sort of magic single level query here um, to figure this out. So it is successful in, oh. in some way. Um, and then if we wanted to um, take a look at everybody who existed at a particular level in the graph, then we could just do something like this, where um, we're getting path from CEO dot gut level equals one. So it's going to give you everybody who's kind of like one level away from the CEO. Um, so I guess you could use this sort of data structure to figure out your degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon as well. Um, or I, I hear that the new thing is degrees of separation from Taylor Swift these days. Um, and then we can print that out here. So let's go through that real quickly here. Uh, so that's the first one we had here. And then this is the, the second one here. So it's printed out all the, the people that sort of like the first level down. Yeah, so I haven't found a real world use for this yet, but I know in the past that I have built kind of like representations of file systems previously uh, and having mm -hmm. something like this would have been really useful to have um, being able to just say like, hey, give me everything that exists as a descendant of this particular directory um, would be quick and easy rather than the, the way that I used to have to craft queries for that. Yeah, so, I remember having to write some, doing some heavy gymnastics with the queries we were writing to try to accomplish something like this either that or else just running way too many queries right to try to figure it out so it's nice to have this all built in 
Yeah, and I think you can do, I haven't, I haven't tried any of these, but I think you can just like, kind of like recurse back up the tree and down the tree too, as you mm -hmm. need to do. So if you need to just get like who somebody's parent know it is, it's fairly easy to do that. Cool. All right. Well, that's hierarchical ID in Entity Framework 8. Uh, so tricks are remembering to install that package, uh, remembering in the context to add the, the builder options here, um, and then um, remembering that when you are building your hierarchical IDs that it has to end with a, a slash. You can't just like four slash one. It's gonna be four slash one slash. And that's pretty much it. Cool, thanks Simon. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on today's episode. Remember to like, comment and share and we'll see everybody next time.